Hello, and thank you for tuning into my video. Today, I am in the mood to do some sketches, some flowers. It's spring, everything's blooming around me, and I have this beautiful vase that I just love, and I couldn't decide what flower to put in, in it. I didn't know if I should do a yellow one or a red one or whatever. So I thought, well, let me paint it. And first of all, because it's really cool looking, and I'll just put some flowers next to it and see which one looks great. So this is just a little a little sketch that I did and playing around with the lights. I was also interested in, and I don't do very much glass work or light effect. So it's kind of a study for me to do the reflection and the lighting on this bottle. So I took it outside and took some pictures of it in the sun and kind of got where I wanted some cool reflections off of the bottle that I wanted. And then I came in and kind of did a, a light sketch and now I'm painting it um, with watercolor. So as you can see, these are the first layers and they're very light. Um, this is, you always wanna, there's always an ugly stage in a painting drawing, whatever, piece of art. There's always an ugly stage, so you gotta hang in there. So these are the very first layers, and it's really cool on one of the reflections in the bottle, it's really lavender looking. So I wanted to make sure I didn't go too dark, you can see on that left side, and definitely leave some of the white of the paper because on the right side there's this great um, you know, kind of burst of, of light of a reflection. Actually, there's two, almost like a star. So I kind of, I was really, my goal was trying to get these two circle-like reflections really, really, really as bright as possible. So I'm kind of being a little overly careful here. Uh, again, it's, I'm trying to highlight keep the highlights, but go in the darker areas, but not go too dark. So you can see that little white area that I'm trying to keep because I don't, that's where the reflection is going to be. And here I am doing the outline of the bottle. It's really, really dark on the, on the outer edge, which gives a great contrast because it's next to that white, that white area, that reflection area that again, I want to keep keep really light so when it's you, know, you have if you want something lighter then you want to put something darker next to it. it you know you don't necessarily have to go and pile on a bunch of white paint just you know do you know it's all about contrast do your darks first and then if that area that you want lighter if it's still not light enough then go ahead and try to lighten it up but always finish up with your darks and go as dark as you need to do do a, a grayscale, you know, black and white of the photo or your your image reference photo before you start painting so you can see exactly where the darks and the lights are because that's pretty much what it's all about. Here I am working on my darks, which again it's watercolor. You always go light to first or light to light to dark first. So I'm not going too too dark, but I do need to get some kind of reference on where my where I do want my dark now I'm going to go really really dark here um, in this area so this is actually probably the first of three layers I mean that's how the dark deep blue I want I want to go almost like a almost a, like a kind of a reddish black black blue so that's where I'm Headed with this one and again that just means lots and lots of layers. The brush I'm using is a uh, Mimic Kolinsky brush so it's animal friendly and it is really nice. It's one of my first times using this brush and as you can see it's got a really nice point. Holds a lot of water so I can do you know a big a big brush stroke when I need to, or I can just do a really fine, fine line. So it's nice I don't have to keep switching out brushes. And it's comfortable and to hold, and it's I'm really, really impressed with it. This is not a sponsored video. I am just expressing my opinion. I am very happy with these Mimic Kolinsky brushes. So if you're looking to step it up, definitely get one of these. Okay, so 
I've done probably uh, two or three layers on the bottle. You can see this is kind of the ugly stage right there. I'm letting it all dry. It's really, really wet. So I'm letting it dry and moving on to the flowers. Now these flowers, I don't know the name of them. I saw them in a salon, my beauty salon that I go to, my hair, my hairstylist, and they had these there and they were so pretty. They were violet, but on the outer edge, they were just like this beautiful, almost like cottony white, little fine, fine hairs. So I've tried to emulate them, but not really doing the best job. I do go in in a little bit here and just add a bunch of white to try to get that poofy cotton feeling, but it didn't really work out. So I forgot to turn on the video here. As you can see, I kind of jumped ahead and did some daisies. Basically, all I did was a really, really light gray for the petals. And you just do the outer edges and a little green for the stems. And of course, the stamens, just a little yellow mixed with orange. And I keep going back and just letting it dry. I'll go back and do another layer. Let it dry, go back and do a little darker. Um, let it dry, go do another area, go to another flower. Or you can see, there you go, I did a heat dryer. So that was a dryer um, to speed everything up. So I'm letting it dry naturally, going back to the, going back to the bottle. Doing a I'm going to do a few more layers there. That is actually a scrubber brush that I love. I needed to lift up a little color, and I had just discovered these scrubber brushes to lift color, and they are really, really nice, especially when you have work on good paper that can take a little lifting of the paint. So there you go. I'm trying to get that really star-like um, reflection there on the bottle. So I ended up doing some a little white gouache there, but I lost my, I lost the white of the paper, not totally completely, so I'm kind of working with it. What I should have done is when I put the blue around that white area, I probably should have taken a tissue and blotted it, and then that's it, then leave it alone. Um, because then that way it lifts up just enough of the paint to where it blends in. So you have that soft blending look. It just didn't happen for me on this one. So eh, hopefully it doesn't look over overworked in the end. But uh, I, was, I was all right with it. Just for a fun little experimental sketch. I'm not going to worry about it, right? So here I am. So the pink is totally completely dried there. So I'm going over pretty with some pretty dark greens uh, just to cover the pink of this one. And then I love this look. This is like a, um, it's like a uh, unbleached titanium white paint that I love. And I put that over the green just for when it's, of course, when it's dry. And that again gives that cottony kind of effect that I was trying to go for that you see with herbs and, and flowers and stuff out there at the springtime. They're really kind of light and fluffy. So I'm putting in some grass and some greens here and and again some more after everything's dry a couple more little details here and there and doing some final highlights here with some white gouache that is a savior usually always getting the so the light is coming from the right side so I'm really focusing on the light the highlights there on the right side and getting the little teardrop little burst of brightness there trying to accentuate that and get that a, a cool 3d effect and here is the final result of a fun time making daisies and flowers please hit subscribe i have lots of more videos coming soon and if you have any requests or recommendations or just want to tell me what you think please leave it in the comments below thank you